Hello, hello. Could you hear? Uh, five more minutes, we will start. But uh, uh, right now, uh, one people lost the key. Anyone find the car key? Please bring back to. Oh, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> and everybody got the red tickets. As we, uh, we uh, one more minutes, we'll start the drawing. The first the gift. <laughs> Hello, we are first joining for the majority for our co-worker, our dear friend that coming earlier. Okay, so we have the three gift joining right now. And uh, you can pick up any from the table. Uh, the, the table, for example, the charm's head or the, tick, or the sticker, you can put it in the car. Or you can uh, actually I have two yard side for support charm yard side. I'll bring that uh, and also it, and uh, you know for the money that you can you can have. So everybody got the red ticket, right? Yeah. The first lucky one is zero two three zero one zero zero two three zero one zero. Check your ticket. Zero two three zero one zero. Oh, it's our Linda Rose, our dear leader. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick up any of the gifts on the table on the front. <laughs> wow. I never win the We are inspired inspired by her, you know. She created the website. And uh, Linda, later you can uh, introduce your website and let people know about the website. They can, you know, go inside to register for for volunteer. Second lockest. Zero two three zero three nine. Zero two three zero three nine. Who got the number? It's maybe me. <laughs> no. <laughs> zero two three zero three nine. Who can? Oh, it's our camera <laughs> co-worker. Okay, you can pick up any of the uh, uh, gift over there. Okay. Okay, third one. After third one, then we will we'll come uh, to our MC. Okay, third one. Zero two three zero zero eight. Zero two three zero zero eight. Ah, our oh, Helen. <laughs> she bring those chairs, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and she is our prayer team. If you need some prayer icon, it's our you know for hosting this event. We need a prayer, prayer, prayer team. Uh, because she encouraged with me, and uh, so last time I, I pray, I walk around this one, uh, uh, walk around this park and pray. I meet the one Chinese uh, lady, and uh, she also very encouraged me. So, and uh, next uh, join time will be uh, seven p.m. Okay. Then right now we give the time to our Michelle. Uh, she is the uh, um, uh, Republican Central Committee. It's just been elected this March, right? And will be uh, official in on board in the January this year. And uh, we let her can introduce her a little bit. And uh, yeah, she is our MC again today. All right, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Vicky, for organizing this fantastic party. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, so yes, my name is Michelle Dexter, and I was recently elected, as Vicky said to represent you, the voters, in the local Republican Party in Santa Clara County. So Vicki invited me here today to share some important information to, with you. But before we start, we have a few candidates that we want to introduce. I first do want to point out Ty. Ty is here with the Milpitas Berryessa Republican Assembly. So they're looking for members only, so join them, help them. The two candidates that we have here so far are uh, Ritesh. Ritesh Tandon, he's running for Congressional District 17. Ritesh, you want to come say something?
Thank you, everyone. I'm very happy to see that that many people they are sitting inside the home, and we Republicans, we are all here enjoying and having fun. It's so great, yeah. Give a big round of applause to all of you, and thank you so much, Vicky. Thank you so much, Linda, and thank you so much for organizing such great events where people can meet and talk because there are so many things which are going far left. Myself, Ritesh Chandan, running for Congress from District 70. My district, this is my district, Berasa, I can tell you. I have San Jose, Santa Clara, Sunnyvale, Cupertino, Fremont, Newark. I have seven cities, and I'm campaigning since November of 2019. I can tell you, the red wave is coming. People, they are very tired how far the left things have happened with the condition of homelessness, with the condition of traffic, no doubt the COVID has relieved the traffic issues, with the poor performing schools, poor infrastructure. In fact, where I see my opponent trying to move the job outside Silicon Valley, they are trying to teach more Islam in the schools. In fact, things are not right. And this is the reason my background, 22 years working for community, working for people, decided to stand up. In fact, when I came here 22 years back, I was here for the American dream. And I achieved that. But I see that the future generation, that dream is going to be shattered with all the agenda what the Democrats are doing today. In fact, uh, people, they have started realizing that they are not working not only for the people here, for Americans, but they are completely off. What I'm standing for, I'm standing for the Silicon Valley job. I'm standing for strong neighborhood. I oppose defunding police. I believe in strong America. I like to bring manufacturing back here in the America. I like to make sure that schools, they are so strong that they teach the latest curriculum then instead of 10 years old and the things, how the things are controlled by, by the unions and all the Democrats. In fact, we, all of us, need to work hard to bring this change. If we don't bring this change, we are not doing the justice to our children. Because my opponent endorsed the Prop 16, and I can tell you how dangerous that Prop 16 is. Prop 16 is a race-based division of our society. It is an open race-based discrimination where on the basis of color of your skin, you will get the admission in UC and state colleges. Based on color of your skin, you will get the government job. And very soon they are going to apply the same thing on the private jobs, but they have taken so far to the public jobs as well, where they, you have the reservation and quota system. I came back from India and I know that how bad this quota system is. Hard-working people and hard-working children, when they see that they have worked so hard, but still they cannot get into the colleges and the school of their choice. But at the same time, with the race-based division, those who are not working, they say that, okay, based on the race, I'll get in and Nobody wins. And America goes behind and behind. We have to stand for our conservative values we have to stand for our families, for our children. What and how you can help me is I need help in making phone calls. I have my own system which is set up. If you speak Chinese, if you speak Vietnamese, if you speak any language in terms of Filipino and everything, and at the end English, please, please contact me. Uh, I have very specialized way of reaching out to the community where you'll be talking in your own native language. And that way people understand, they're understanding much better when I talk with him in my language and tell them how bad the, bad the Democrats are and why you have to stand up. So please, uh, my, my card will be on the table. Uh, please take my card and drop me a line and I'll set you up with all the polling system and everything. And once again, my name is Ritesh Chandan, running for Congress from District 17. And I can tell you this number, we have very fair chance to win. Very fair chance. I think a little bit of effort, we will bring the red wave. Are you ready for that? Yeah. yeah.
I cannot hear you. Yeah. Are you ready for the red wave? Yeah. Let's, let's make it happen, everyone. Thank you so much once again, Linda, Vicky, and everyone for coming here. Thank you. Yeah, anyone can get this one. All right, thank you, Ritesh. And now we have Allison. Allison Hayden, are you here? Yes, Where did she go? Yes. Oh, here she comes. Allison Hayden is running for also for Congress in District 15. Okay. Well, thank everybody for coming out. I'm a shorty. You can check out the microphone. Okay, I'll just do it. I always wanted to sing on it with the microphone. It's <laughs> my opportunity. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming out. Uh, this is uh, the election for America. So I think we all know that it's, uh, uh, if it doesn't go well, it may well be the last election for America. So we very much need everyone to push to get people out to vote who never voted before. And, uh, this, I mean, that's huge. The voter rolls, we could have won California many times if people would just get out and vote. Conservatives, but if you know people, and I changed to independent for a time, if you know people who are independent or declined to state, and they don't want to be involved in the political process, you better tell them if they, if they like their life, they better get involved this time and get out and vote. This is, this is it. And so this is no time to be disgusted with politics because politics run our lives. And if we don't wake up to that fact, it's not politics, it's policy. And we're at the brink of whether we want a republic or we want a socialized America where we will have no choice and no voice. And things, and they'll put in their little puppet and the, and the sovereignty of the people, which is what makes this country great, the freedoms that Americans enjoy, and almost everybody's an immigrant at some point. I mean, my family came here before we were a nation. I mean, my, on my mother's side. So, but we came here from somewhere else, and everybody came here from somewhere else. So. Um, most everyone. So the point is, we want Americans to pull together. This is about unity. This is time for us to come together and remember why our forefathers, or we came here to begin with, right? Why we're here. Many of the people here are newer immigrants, and so the reality of what they left is a lot more real. It's a lot more recent. But the fact remains, it's freedom. It's the freedoms of the individual You Freedom to choose your own school. How about, you know, right? You And it's merit-based. People that come in here should be here because they have something to offer, not they get on the public dole. We are not, you know, we are, we are compassionate, but we're not idiots. We're not, you know, this is not a place just for asylees, although every country has asylee laws and we, we welcome asylees, but we want a country that is built by people who want, to who want to move in their life. They want to contribute to their communities. We're looking at COVID, you know, we have masks, we're not masks. We're looking at a California burn down. So California is gonna be in trauma for a while. And if we don't get rid of some officials, we're, it's going to be longer than anyone can imagine. So this is an opportunity. Let's take it as an opportunity to rebuild the family. The moniker of my campaign is Family First. And it is exactly the breakdown of the family. So I'm talking, that has contributed to, I mean, most of the people in jail don't have fathers, you know? Many of them. So this is a dire situation. Families make communities. Community, the strength of America has always been at the community level. When we respond to all the trauma that is going on to help our seniors, we, at the community level, we can offer different levels of care. 
for our seniors. We can offer uh, child child uh, care during the day if parents can go to work, right? But but if students are still at home, I'm a teacher, so I'm going to talk about teaching a little, a little bit. Go over my the school thing. I'm a I'm a special ed teacher, and it's not good. The public school system, we need to get control. So I, I'm challenging, I was at a, a function yesterday, and really, nothing's gonna change. Unless, this system is about we the people. So if we care, we need to step up and get on school boards. You need to get on the, anything you pay a tax to, you have a right for represent, you have a right to get involved and be represented. Don't wait for them to tell you, because I'll tell you, the Democrats know how to work it, and they're on all the boards, changing all the policies at a local level. And before you know it, stuff is going on that you never signed on to. So you, we all need, at whatever level, you might be a, a electrical person. You know, you so you go to the area of your expertise and join those boards and get involved. That's what we. Americans, you know, we've been silent too long and we have to not only not be silent, we have to get involved, get busy. By next year, everyone here, you came out here today which shows you care about your country and about your community. So I challenge you, everyone here, get on a board of some, uh, some city, uh, city council board, something that governs your country, your community, and get involved. Schools uh, are, are mandating, the parental control is being completely taken away. I had a student that was coming out gay. Um, he, he was really ambivalent, he didn't know. They gave him counseling, they could, I couldn't tell the parents. He, flung, he was flunking science and math in my class because of the scheduling. I couldn't tell the parent why he was flunking. I was told by the principal the school would be sued or, and I could lose my license if I told the truth about what he wasn't going to class and he wasn't doing his work. So the, the point is, we, you, you don't get to know that the state's taking that control away uh, and we have to take that back. The, the, you know, it's breaking our families. So I'm back to families first. So get involved, know what's going on, and vote your values. Thank you. Allison Hayden for Congress and uh, Alameda County. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. She stayed in Taiwan for 15 years. So I want to teach you how to work. Thank you. All right, well, it takes a lot of courage to step up and say, I will represent the voters. I will represent the people. So let's give Ritesh and Allison a, a hand again. A candidate. So who here can name a Republican value and what it means to you? Can anyone tell me a Republican value? Yes. Family. Yep. Yep. Very good. Freedom. Yes, religious freedom. Thank you. Thank you. So about a year ago on TV, I saw thugs harass conservative students who were expressing their right to free speech on college campuses. I saw masked goons claiming to be anti-Nazis damage property because they didn't agree with the featured speaker at UC Berkeley. And right here in San Jose, there was a woman who was being pushed against a locked door with eggs, raw eggs being thrown at her, and the police just stood by and did nothing. What was her crime? What was so bad? She, she was supporting our duly elected president, and they didn't like that. Well, this scared me. Have any of you ever felt scared? Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not normally a fearful person, but then I realized that if I was feeling this way, then somebody intended for me to feel this way. It was by design to make us feel small and powerless and silent. 
Now, I couldn't believe that I was the only person in Santa Clara County who disagreed with all this madness. So I took to the internet to search for other like-minded people. And to my surprise, there were many local groups who are defending liberty, right here in San Jose. So I surveyed my options to see what I could do that would make the most impact, that would make the most, to be the most effective in combating this progressive tyranny that is threatening our right to live free and safely pursue happiness. So I believe I found the answer, and I would like to share it with you today here in hope that you will join me. Particularly because, as Allison just told us, the barbarians are at the gate, and that is no joke. They are here, we've seen them, we've seen the riots. A friend of mine who works for the city of San Jose told me that when the recent riots began here in San Jose, that the city was deluged for days with phone calls from people who were reading from scripts demanding that the police be defunded. There were flyers posted on next door, flyers posted in suburban neighborhoods, directing people to where they could go and join these riots. One of my team members received a text message on her phone directing her to site that supports the riots. We couldn't figure out how did they find her. She's a conservative. How'd they find her? But she had enrolled in a nonpartisan, nonpartisan get out the vote website to do competitive research for the work that we're doing to have these parties. And this website was touted by Michelle Obama. So might not have been too nonpartisan. But the point is that those who threaten our liberty are well organized and activated. So we need to protect our values by doing the same. So we have to ask ourselves, do we want to stop socialist policies from destroying our state? Yeah. Yes. yes. Do we want to protect our country from being ruled by unelected globalists? Yes. yes. Do we want to keep our rights to defend ourselves and our families, to practice our religion freely, and to preserve our history accurately? Yes. 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 Do we want to protect our children from being indoctrinated by people with destructive values? Yes. yes. So if that's true, if that's how we really feel, then we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to do what it takes to defeat those who are attacking our values. We are Republicans. Our party was found on freedom. Don't you think it's up to us to defend that freedom? Ellen has a map he's gonna show us here. Does anyone know when the last time was that Santa Clara County voted Republican? That map is all you can see, it's all red. California was a primarily Republican state, and even Santa Clara County was Republican. The only thing blue is San Francisco. <laughs> Does anybody know how long ago that was? About, yeah, about, it was in 1984. Ronald Reagan versus Mondale. That's right, we can do it. We can do that's right. it. That's right, it's doable. So, at that time, what was Reagan selling? What was he? What was he telling people? And what was he campaigning on? Defense. Yep, Defense. defense. Freedom. That's right, freedom. So he was selling freedom, supported by limited government, law and order, something we could use now, and personal responsibility. And as you said, we did it before. We can do it again. So today, I am going to tell you the unvarnished facts about the condition of our party, how it's organized, and where you fit in. And I'm going to tell you how we can take back California, because we can. I truly believe that together, we can do it, starting right here, right now. Imagine with me 
get in a picture in your mind. Imagine what life in California would be like if there were more conservatives in office. Can you imagine that? What, 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 how, how things would be different? Can you get that picture in your head, how different it would be if there were more conservatives in office running our state? So how important is it to you that we achieve that vision? What are we going to do to create that vision? What are we doing right now to create that vision? Well, many of us are afraid and hiding. We don't even know that there's Republicans living on the street right next door to us. Some of us are angry and complaining, venting to people who agree with them. And others are trying to get people to wake up and see the insanity by posting memes on social media. But far too many of us are doing the three activities that will truly make a difference. And these are finding conservative candidates to run for office, activating an army of volunteers to support those candidates so they can win, and registering voters, getting enough Republicans to vote so we can all win. We will go far if we find candidates, activate voters, and activate volunteers and register voters. Now the group most responsible for these activities is called the Santa Clara County Republican Central Committee. That's where I was elected to. So this is your Republican Party here in Santa Clara County. But what is a party? A party is just an organized group of people who have the same ideology and basic political positions. It's people. It's you, and you, and you, and me working together to elect representatives who support our values. Do you think if more of us participated in the party, we would have a greater opportunity to win? Yes. So here are the unvarnished facts that I promised you. Now, let me warn you, this will either scare the daylights out of you, or it will inspire you to play a big game. And I hope it's the latter. You ready? Yeah. All right, the National Party is called the Republican National Committee, and it's organized by states. In our state, we have the California Republican Party. Now, one might think that there are dozens of people working at desks up in Sacramento building the party. In actual fact, there are about five. And I met them last fall at a training and they were all under 35 for sure, probably under 30, and they had only been on the job for three to six months. Now, there are 40 million people in California. So five, 40 million. Five, 40 million. The California Republican Party is organized by county. Now, there are 58 counties in California, and each has what is called a central committee. The Santa Clara County Republican Central Committee is made up of 43 people. Their positions are unpaid. Many of them also have a job or a business, and they raise families. So these 43 people are no different than you. They, but they have assumed responsibility for activating hundreds of thousands of voters to the best of their ability. Now these 43 people are organized into five districts. It's taken a few months, but we now have five leaders, one for each of those districts. But each district has about 400,000 people in it. So we have five leaders that are starting to try to build, do the campaign, the party building activities that we need to do. Each district is organized by neighborhood. So there are 2,147 neighborhoods in Santa Clara County. The district leaders depend on neighborhood leaders to help them reach the Republicans in those neighborhoods. So how many neighborhood leaders do we have so far reaching out to Republicans? Linda and I here working, we have 44. 
So we need a few more. <laughs> Just a few thousand. What's that? Just a few thousand, yes. <laughs> so we are only losing, we are losing elections by a tiny quantity of votes per neighborhood. Very tiny. I'll give you a couple examples. At the end of my talk here, um, Alan and, and Ty, they're going to hand out some flyers, and you'll see some numbers on the back that were a sample neighborhood for a, a party gathering like this that we did down in Morgan Hill. And so in the 2018 general election in that particular neighborhood, there were 67 registered Republicans, but only 53 of them voted. That means 14, remember that number now, 14 Republicans did not vote. Now only 66 Democrats voted. That's 13 more than the Republicans. So had those other 14 Republicans voted, we would have won in that neighborhood by one vote. I'll give you another example. In the March primary that we just had, we had a great candidate running for supervisor for District 3, which is actually this district. If every Republican who was registered to vote would have voted for him, he would have come in first place in the primary. But it was a nonpartisan race. So the party was not identified on the ballot. So you couldn't tell if he was a Republican or not. And we just didn't have enough volunteers to help us reach all the voters to tell them about him. So now there are two Democrats running for that office in the general in November. So our party is running on a scarcity of candidates, volunteers, and voters. And this is not because there are too few conservatives in the county. Rather, it is because there are not enough of us doing the three actions necessary to win, finding candidates, activating volunteers, and registering voters. Again, together, we can go far if we, if we can change that. So here's how we're going to do it. So we have a team of people who are finding candidates to run for office. And if you've ever considered running for office, please come and talk to me or Linda or Ty or Alan afterwards, and we will give you the tools and the support that you need to get started. Because there's 2022 is coming, right? There'll be another couple hundred seats open, so we can get started. We are building the party by activating volunteers. So your help can be as simple as making phone calls or writing letters from home. And we have a huge need for people willing to distribute door hangers. So in a couple weeks, the first week of October, the ballots get mailed out. And so we need to let Republican voters know who those nonpartisan candidates are. And the only way they can know that is if we tell them. So we have door hangers made up and we need to get them distributed so people can know who to vote for and also the positions on the, on the propositions, how to vote on the propositions. So we're looking for zip code leaders, someone who will own an entire zip code. Now that doesn't mean that you have to do all the work yourself, that you don't have to distribute them all yourself. It means that you will commit to finding others to help you distribute them. So teams of two work best, kind of a drive and drop, so if one person drives and the other person gets out and puts it on the door and comes back, that works best, but it's something you could do by yourself too. We need about 250 volunteers to reach our goal of distributing 70,000 door hangers. And it's just not possible for me or Linda to find and talk to that many people ourselves, so we need help with that. You can help us by being a zip code leader. You can also be a neighborhood leader, a neighborhood leader to build relationships with Republicans in your neighborhood and inspire them to get involved. As a neighborhood leader, you'll support the zip code leader by helping them find volunteers. You will also help people get registered to vote, and you will help clear up the voter rolls as you find that people have moved away or passed away, and you can pass that information on to the registrar and get them off the records. So you can have an enormous impact as a zip code leader or a neighborhood leader. Now, whichever role you take, I tell you, 
eventually you will encounter frustrated Democrats and declined to state voters who will want to join our party. And you can help them do that. We have many stories of Democrats who are so frustrated with the, with the chaos and the violence and the destruction that's happening. And they just take someone, they, they don't know a Republican. So if you talk to them, you can be the person that helps them come into our party where their values really are represented. So, we need zip code leaders and neighborhood leaders. We will give you the support, the tools, everything that you need to get the job done. Whether you can help a little or a lot, it is your power, your power, that will move this forward. With your help, we can make Santa Clara County a shining example here in California. It is within our grasp. So I have to ask you, who here is willing to be a zip code leader? Is there anyone here who's willing to take on a, a zip code to help us find, uh, to, to help us distribute door hangers in, the, in this area? Yes, yes. Is there one? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And another back there? Excellent. Thank you. So if you will see Linda, and if there's anybody who's willing to help them, to help them find leaders, or uh, just people to distribute, that would be fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful. Please see, there's, uh, Alan is there, and uh, Linda or Ty. You could talk to them, that'd be great. Yeah, yes. And so, oh, one more thing. So, we have a sign-up sheet. I think Ty was doing some little sign-up sheets. There's some little half sign-up sheets. Make sure you get those. And all of the opportunities that we have to volunteer are listed on there. And. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much for letting me be here tonight. Thank you, Vicky. Okay, second drawing. <laughs> Prepare your ticket. Also, we are uh, we draw three of them. Three of lucky people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Georgia. Two, zero, two, three, zero. And Georgia in the uh, uh, he is from the for uh, Mental Park uh, Council before, and uh, also the lieutenant. Look at the government, yeah, before. And he's, uh, he's uh, in Chinese uh, video, uh, radio, usually we ask about the opinion or, or interview him. So we can hear so many the uh, Xingdao Dian Tai, and Tai Fang 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 Tai, and Tai so I want to say a few things about what's going on. There's uh, three kids who just come by. He was, they are there listening. And then they don't want to get take a picture. Let me just take this off. It's much better that way. So they don't want to take a picture because they are afraid to be identified by their friends or their teachers. Because right now we have a pervasive sense of fear in this country to be identified as a conservative. People losing their jobs, losing their businesses because of this, and this have never happened in American history. We used to with honor and respect different opinions. The left is changing that narrative. Once somebody asked me about why I am against removing Confederate statues somewhere in another state. I want to remind people, many civil wars, actually one of the ladies right there, she have a free Vietnam flag. Many civil wars are ending with a lot of people dead and a lot of people leaving their country. American Civil War is one of the few where we ended that with respect for each other. And that is not that often. And we want to get back to that, where we can at least respect our opponents and have a recent discussion. And unlike somebody who just walked by earlier and just you know yell obscenities at us, I think that is not what the America, at least 10 years ago, when we still respect each other. And we need to get back to that. 
the other thing that I want to talk about is that the left have somehow stealthily claimed the right to proclaim what is morally right. Somehow they will come to me. I have this friend of mine who come talk to me and say, "Well, Donald Trump is this morally reprehensible person," and I said, "Hey." Didn't you tell us that morality is relative, fluent, and passé? Yet somehow they will go wrong and claim that they have this moral authority to decide what is right and wrong. They will go wrong and say this post is against our community standards. By whose standards? Who make you the leader? Who make you the authority? Who give you the right to say this statue is wrong and that is not wrong? Who goes around and say the Ulysses Grant statue in San Francisco is somehow racist? He is the general who defeated the South. He united the United States after the Civil War, and yet his statue was destroyed in San Francisco. So today, yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we can do technically, but I want to go out and thank everybody for being here because you're not afraid. We must not live in fear. Thank you. We must be willing to go out and talk to people. And the other thing, sometimes we talk about old fables. One fable that I talk about a lot right now is the emperor's new clothes. Anybody knows that story? They would tell people and say, "Hey, if you're smart, you are going to see the beautiful clothes that the emperor's wearing." If you are well educated, you will see the beautiful clothes that the emperor is wearing. So everybody is like pretending to see the emperor's new clothes, and that's exactly what the Democrats are doing. They will go talk to you and say, "Oh, if you are smart and educated, you will not vote Republican, because they are the party of the rednecks, the party of uneducated people." You know what? People who know history, who know economics. Who knows what have happened in countries like Vietnam or China or Russia or Venezuela or Zimbabwe? We vote Republican because we know those experiments has been tried and tried before. Someone go talk to me and say, "Oh, but we're going to do better than China this time." You know what? You're not. <laughs> You're not because human nature is such that if you give these people that much power, they are going to abuse it. They might have the title of this coordinator. They might have started with all this idealism, but eventually the power that we give to government will corrupt them to the point that they will become tyrants. And that's why we need to keep those powers with the people. Anyway, enough ranting about that. Back to something what we can do. One of the things that I go to a church. A lot of people go to churches. You go talk to them. Again, a fear. A lot of church leaders say, "I'm afraid that we are not going to lose our 501c status." That you know what? Why are you afraid of that? But they are. But so you go talk to them and say, "There are things you can do that are legal. You can collect ballots in California right now because of the new laws to allow." Ballot harvesting. Non-profit organizations can go out and collect ballots. You know what? Churches can do that too. You can go out and ask people to return ballots to the church. You can teach people what are the propositions, what are the candidates running. Yes, you cannot tell them which candidate to vote for, but you can tell them the differences, and then educate them and make sure that they voted. I just hear what you have said earlier. There are a lot of people who are looking around and say, "My vote doesn't count." You know what? It does count because even if you vote in an election that you think it's going to lose, let's say I run an election and I lose by 45 percent, but if I lose by 48 percent, a better candidate might show up. More people will be not living in fear, and they can say, "Look, there's a chance of success," and that's why your Courage is contagious. Your courage is contagious because fear is also contagious. We need to go back and infect people of courage and go out and do things and save this country. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Welcome to enjoy the food. Take any take a table on the drink and have a, a orange, a apple juice, and also the water or some snack.
Uh, actually, get, tell you the good news regarding the uh, we have the project for uh, 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 volunteer to uh, mail out the, for uh, uh, the non NPP is a uh, no, no party the people. Uh, if you have you if you can commit the two hundred mails, and we have the printer, uh, the, the sister she will it to help the print out your address and uh, reduce the, the postage from fifty four cents can reduce to twenty five cents. We calculate including the envelope and the print out the two pack, uh, the two two side uh, of the information, and also the. Uh, the total will be under 48 cents for each of person. So if you can commit the, like 200, you can sign up the volunteership. And of course, we have a list, so many kinds of volunteer. And I just uh, got the good news. We can save our postage and uh, mail out the 290 of the non-MPP in the Senaka County. So we have a chance to, to turn the, you know, turn the blue to red. In, in our county, start with our county, start with our in our area. So and, uh, and of course, the, in California, that's our dream. And uh, we, I'm so thank you for. We have so many leaders. They help the host this. For me, I don't know. They just, uh, just we just find the place, just uh, find the time, and uh, then then prepare some snack. That's it, and, <laughs> and uh, they just help us the uh, host this event. I wish everybody can have, have a host this and uh, can duplicate, and we can have the you know more people know about the how to do how to how to work together to you know to help the support Trumps help the support those of the candidate who have the same value as same as us. And Linda, do you want to talk something? Yes. Yeah. I inspired by her, you know, because uh, she created a website and uh, collects so many volunteers and uh, let the dreams come true. <laughs> hey guys, you want to win? You want to win this election? Yeah. 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 Okay. I need people who live in these zip codes. 95120. Does anybody here live in 95120? 95111 95121 9512195 Nine five zero five one. Will you help me, please? Thank you. Nine five zero five four. Nine five zero. No, excuse me. Nine five one one seven. Nine five nine four zero two four. Nine four zero eight seven. 94301, 95070, and 95129. Okay, so I'll talk to those two. I want you guys to know you're an awesome, awesome group of people. We've already gotten way more zip code leaders than we thought we could get today. Um, if you know of anybody, you need to spread the word. Spread the word. Tell people that we need help. Tell them to go to svgop.com. That's Silicon Valley Grand Old Party .com, and sign up to volunteer to walk precincts, and 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 we will get them co connected up. We have seventy thousand door hangers. We want to get out. I don't want to do any less than 70,000. I want to do 100%. I know that the Republicans in this area are awesome. We like to win, and we're going to hit that goal. Thank you.